I have here a small test application and in that I have a class defined called tsuicide and uh, it has a constructor which takes three parameters a name and whether to die in the constructor or destructor uh, so if we go down and have a look at the constructor for it we'll see that if it says uh, die in construction we raise an exception uh, of I never asked to be born and in the uh, destructor uh, it says that the it's a show message to show that the destructor has been called and then uh, raises an exception um, uh, you'll never take me alive if die in destruction is set now my first little example is this in here where we just create an instance of T suicide S and then free it and then show a message and if we run this by default we get the destructor is called and it's completed now if we set this to true and run it the, the destructor is called uh, and then the application handles the destruct the um, the exception. So the the constructor creates an exception. Uh, the and what happens immediately is the destructor is called. Uh, whenever a, an exception occurs in a in a constructor, its uh, corresponding destructor is called. Um, so this uh, S free never gets called. In fact, we can even pl place a breakpoint there and run it. And we get the exceptions raised, and the destructor is called, and the application handles the um, the exception. Okay, the other option is for an exception to occur in the destructor. Um, and if we run that, of course gets created fine uh, and the destructor is called and then we get the application handling the exception our next example uh, is our single object well formed um, constructor and let's just set this false initially um, so basically we create our uh, instance of T suicide. Uh, we have some some code in the try block, and then finally uh, we free the object and um, we show a message finally complete. So I probably I suppose I could run it. But it's rather unexciting. So the destructor is called and finally complete. Um, what I can do is make the exception occur in the constructor and what will happen here is the um, constructor is called uh, an exception is raised and immediately the destructor is called for um, S uh, and we never actually execute this code here and just to demonstrate that um, if I run it with our exception, if we break on that, uh, there it is, and oh, that one there, and there's where the, where the so we're that line of code, and um, if I oops, place a breakpoint there and run, it of course uh, never gets there, but the destructor is called, and of course the application handles the exception. So this is this is one way of doing a a try finally block by creating your uh, object before the try um, and so if if the exception is called if an exception is created in the constructor um, it, the object is freed correctly and not freed twice for instance uh, and of course if I set this to true and run it we get 
piece tractor is called at this point here and the finally completed message is never shown okay now there is an alternative way of uh, doing your uh, try finally block for creating objects and it's this here this time we start by setting our um, variable s to nil and in the try block we create an instance of t-suicide and assign that to s and then finally we free it and we do our finally complete message and we'll just run it with the, an error in the constructor so uh, let's run this it's well formed to uh, so the destructor is called and finally complete and there's the application handling the exception so this time uh, we raise the exception and we skip to the finally block uh, it calls s.free now um, actually let's put a breakpoint there and run it with debugging okay there's our exception the destructor is called and now we're going to call s.free now you might think that it's going to free it twice but no uh, s is actually still nil this destructor failed so s, s never gets assigned the instance of t suicide we're trying to create uh, and calling free um, on a nil uh, doesn't do anything so if we carry on running that and I can go if we have a look at the source code for free it says if self isn't nil call the destructor so this is another um, valid way of uh, creating an object uh, and then making sure it's freed uh, and of course we're only really concerned here with the uh, exception occurring in the, in the constructor at this point okay now let's have a look at um, when we're creating two objects uh, here I've got the creation of two objects and then a, a try block finally um, and then now uh, freeing the two objects and then doing a show message now um, the, there's two possible problems that could arise here uh, the first is that if in the construction of S2 there is an exception this uh, finally block will never get executed and uh, S1 will never get freed um, I can probably just demonstrate that by placing a, a breakpoint here although you can probably you know see it quite clearly that it's not gonna not gonna happen so we get S2 raises an exception the destructor for S2 is called uh, and the application handles the exception so in this in this case uh, S1 is still um, floating in memory um, the other possible problem is that if in the destruction of S2 here um, if there's a, an exception raised there uh, S1 will never get freed again and I can just demonstrate that um, well we'll see if we get the finally complete so the destructor for S2 is called uh, and the application handles it and we never see the destructor for um, S1 being called okay so this is a problem uh, how do we get round at all uh, well the, the answer is to use to try finally blocks and that's what we're going to do and let's have a look in here so this time we're creating an instance of uh, t-suicide s1 and then doing the same again uh, for s2 and then we have our code and then we free s2 and this has got the inner finally completed and then free s1 with our outer finally completed um, let's, and let's uh, well if as we already know from our previous examples if the uh, if we have an error here um, the destructor will get automatically called and this will never get uh, executed so the point of interest is 
perhaps in S2. <coughs> so if we set this to true, and we'll run it without debugging. So we get the S2 destructor being called uh, because the create failed and the S1 destructor is called, the outer finally is completed and then we get um, this error here. So, so we go, we, get, we have the exception ha happening here and then skipping down to the finally. And we can also look at what happens if the destructor raises an exception, exception here. Uh, <coughs> and as you can probably see, uh, the exception will be raised, uh, and then we'll skip to the finally block here, and S1 will get freed. Um, and I'll just briefly demonstrate that. The destructor for S2 is called because the, oops, because the constructor failed. and then the S1 destructor is called and the outer finally is completed and then the application handles the exception at the very end so yes we skip from this free statement here down to the finally and the S1 is freed now for the most part generally you don't have to worry about uh, exceptions occurring in constructors um, sorry you do have to worry about constructors as destructors that is generally you can ignore the problem <coughs> so, uh, our final example. Uh, in this example, we only have the one try finally block, and um, so we're initializing our S1 and S2 to nil, and then uh, we create them together and then free them at the end. Uh, if we. So, if an exception occurs in S2 for instance, what will happen is uh, the destructor for S2 will get called, we'll skip to the finally block, uh, S1 dot free will be called uh, which will free S1, S2 um, dot free will be called, uh, S2 will be nil so that will effectively do nothing and then we get our, our show message and if we run that without debugging We'll see that our S2 destructor is called uh, as soon as the constructor fails, and then our S1 destructor is called and are finally complete. And the unhandled exception falls through to the um, the uh, main the default handler for exceptions for the application. Um, so that's pretty good. We uh, only require the one uh, try finally block, and we can handle the uh, any errors in the constructors and of course if any other exception is raised um, in part of our our code um, the destructors will get called as well and the only problem arises in this case if uh, S1 if we have uh, some sort of disaster happens uh, as part of its destruction um, the S2 will never get freed um, and I ah, suppose I can run it, demonstrate it. So our S1 destructor is called, uh, and it, the exception flows through to the application. Um, so uh, S2 is created, but is never freed. If we compare the code. Um, this nested try finally block is uh, quite complicated um, and makes the code difficult to read. Uh, whereas this uh, try finally, we only have the one, um, and it's a lot cleaner and easier to understand. But the only thing you have to worry about is that um, in this case, if there's a a failure in uh, the destructor for S1. Um, S2 might not get freed, and if in the destructor it, it's disconnecting from some server or something like that, or rather S2 is disconnecting from some server, um, 
it, it might be a problem, but uh, for the most part, it's probably quite safe. And um, I think that's all I really need to show you here. Um, let's move on to the summary. In this movie, we've had a look at how to arrange your code to handle some pretty bad failures, specifically when constructors or destructors fail. Actually, we're not handling the failures. That's usually the job of try except blocks. And what we were doing was making sure that as many of the allocated resources are correctly freed as possible. And we had a look at a few ways of arranging try finally blocks to achieve this. When a constructor fails, its destructor is automatically called. Now, this has a side effect that I haven't mentioned as yet, in that you may need to design your destructor so that it will work correctly even if your object only gets half created. With destructors, it's probably somewhat overkill in assuming that they are going to fail. It's uh, somewhat abnormal for the code within a destructor to raise an unhandled exception, um, but some sort of failure may occur and you should be aware of this possibility. However, it's not abnormal for a constructor to raise an exception, especially if you're passing some sort of invalid data. Uh, for example, uh, if you pass c colon backslash question mark dot txt to the constructor of t file stream. This was just really an overview and probably I could have said more. Uh, however, my goal was not to cover all possibilities, just some of the most common. Thanks for watching and I hope you've learned something.